In the unyielding darkness of space, the starship Eternity's voyage glided silently, a solitary speck in the vast cosmic ocean. Its sleek, silver exterior, a testament to humanity's technological prowess, stood in stark contrast to the endless void that surrounded it. Inside, the crew moved with a mechanical precision born of routine, their faces etched with the quiet resignation of those far from home. Among them was Dr. Elias Hart, a therapist whose life's work had become synonymous with the depths of space. He navigated the narrow corridors of the eternity with practiced ease, his mind a whirlwind of thoughts. Today, he was scheduled to meet Captain Miranda Leahy, a woman whose recent demeanor had sparked concerns among her crew. As Hart entered his modest office, a room adorned with images of distant galaxies and nebulae, he paused to gaze at a photograph of a younger version of himself, full of naivety and dreams. Those dreams had long since been tempered by the harsh realities of space travel. He sighed, a sound lost in the ship's gentle hum, and turned his attention to his notes on Captain Lay. Miranda Lay was a seasoned astronaut, her record was impeccable, and her resolve was unshakable. Or so it had seemed. Lately, her once sharp command had been dulled by a pensive, distant gaze. She spoke less, and when she did, her words were tinged with an uncharacteristic melancholy. It was as if the vastness of space had finally begun to seep into her bones. The soft chime of the door announced Miranda's arrival. She entered with a poise that belied her inner turmoil, her uniform immaculate, her dark hair pulled back in a strict ponytail. Yet once bright with the thrill of exploration, her eyes now mirrored the cold, distant stars. Captain Layhart greeted, gesturing towards the chair across from his desk. Thank you for coming. Miranda nodded, taking a seat but avoiding his gaze. The silence between them stretched, a tangible entity in the compact room. Hart broke the silence. I understand that the vastness of space can be overwhelming at times. How are you feeling about the mission? Miranda's response was slow, her voice a mere whisper. Doctor, have you ever stared into the abyss so long that it began to stare back into you? The question hung in the air, heavy with unspoken fears. Hart recognized the signs he had seen them before in others. The profound loneliness of space and the creeping realization of one's insignificance in the face of the infinite universe could break even the strongest wills. This was the onset of the solitude syndrome, a condition still relatively new in psychological studies, yet increasingly common among long-term spacefarers. Yes, I have felt something similar during my early days in space, Hart replied choosing his words carefully. It's a disconcerting feeling, but talking about it is a good start. Miranda finally met his gaze, her eyes a turbulent sea of unshed tears. It's more than disconcerting, Doctor. It's as if all the universe's silence has found a voice and whispers just for me. As Hart listened, his professional concern deepened. He noted her disjointed thoughts, the subtle hints of paranoia. This was more than mere homesickness or fatigue. Miranda Lay was slipping away, her psyche fraying under the relentless gaze of the cosmos. The session continued, with Hart gently probing, guiding Miranda through her thoughts and fears. Each word she spoke painted a picture of a mind under siege, a soul wrestling with the existential dread that came from confronting the universe's vast emptiness. As Miranda left his office, Promising to return for another session, Hart sat back in his chair, a sense of foreboding settling over him. The Eternity's voyage was not just a journey across space, it was a journey into the human psyche, a confrontation with the solitude in the heart of existence. He looked out the small porthole, the stars unblinking in the eternal night. He found neither comfort nor answers in their silent watch, only the echoing reminder of their inscrutable distance. In the void beyond, the eternity sailed on, its course set, its destiny unknown. Dr. Elias Hart sat in the dimly lit archives room of Eternity's voyage, surrounded by screens displaying data and historical records of space travel psychology. He was piecing together a broader understanding of the Solitude Syndrome, 
a puzzle that had become the center of his life's work. The soft hum of the ship's life support systems provided a constant backdrop to his thoughts. On the screens were accounts of early spacefarers who ventured beyond Earth's orbit, testimonials of astronauts from the Mars colonies, and logs from deep space missions. Each story added to the tapestry of understanding the psychological toll of space travel. Hart's eyes were drawn to a particular case study in Astronaut, who had described the silence of space as a void that whispers back your deepest fears. It was a sentiment Hart had heard echoed in his sessions with the crew, a haunting refrain that seemed to underpin their experiences. His next session was with Captain Miranda Lay. As he went to the therapy room, Hart's mind was a whirl of theories and hypotheses about the syndrome. Lay was waiting for him, her gaze distant. She seemed even more withdrawn, a shadow of her once commanding presence. Good morning, Captain Hart greeted, settling into his chair. How are you feeling today? Miranda's response was slow, her voice a mere whisper. It's like the stars are watching me, Doctor, waiting for something I can't comprehend. Hart noted the shift in her demeanor. This wasn't just fatigue, it was like a fundamental part of her being unraveling. The vastness of space can be overwhelming, he said gently. It confronts us with our existence in ways we aren't prepared for. Their session unfolded, with Miranda speaking in fragmented sentences about her dreams filled with echoing voices and visions of empty galaxies. Hart recognized these as manifestations of the syndrome the minds attempt to grapple with the profound isolation of space. After the session, Hart walked through the corridors of the Eternity, observing the crew. The usual camaraderie was missing, replaced by a silent understanding of shared suffering. They were a community bound not by the excitement of exploration, but by the pervasive presence of an unseen adversary that preyed on their minds. Hart decided to hold a group session with some of the crew members. He wanted to understand how widespread existential despair was among them. As they gathered, Hart listened to their stories. Each crew member spoke of similar experiences, a sense of disconnection, a feeling of being watched, and a deep, unshakable loneliness. That night, Hart lay awake in his bunk, the weight of the crew's collective distress pressing down on him. The silence of his room felt oppressive, as if the void of space had seeped into the ship's walls. He realized that the syndrome was not just a psychological condition. It was a profound existential crisis that challenged the essence of what it meant to be human in the vast, indifferent universe. As Hart drifted into a restless sleep, the whispers of the void seemed to echo in his mind, a chorus of silence that spoke of an unfathomable depth of solitude. The chapter closed with Hart enveloped in the darkness of his room, a microcosm of the endless night outside, where billions of stars burned silently in the vast, unfeeling cosmos. Dr. Elias Hart sat in his office aboard the Eternity's voyage, poring over the notes from his recent group session. The crew's voices, still resonant in his mind, painted a picture of a shared psychological crisis. The more he listened, the more he realized the depth of the impact of solitude syndrome. It was as though a haunting melody of despair played softly in the background of their lives, composed of stardust and silence. Hart decided to delve into the personal histories of the crew members. Understanding their backgrounds might offer insights into their resilience or vulnerability to the syndrome. He began with Lieutenant Grace Kim, a young engineer who had recently expressed feelings of paranoia. Her file revealed a history of strong family connections and a deep fascination with the stars. Yet now, those same stars seemed to haunt her. Next, he reviewed the file of Chief Engineer Alan Spector, a space travel veteran. Spector had always been a rock for the crew, but lately he had become withdrawn, spending hours staring out into space. His notes mentioned a growing sense of disconnection from the life he had left behind on Earth. As Hart immersed himself in these stories, a pattern emerged. Regardless of their background, each crew member grappled with the existential weight of their isolation. It was as if leaving Earth had unmoored them from a fundamental sense of belonging. 
The ship's counselor, Maria Gonzalez, approached Hart with concerns about the crew's morale. They organized workshops and group activities to foster a sense of community and shared purpose. But even these efforts seemed like a temporary balm on a deeper wound. A sudden commotion broke his contemplation as Hart observed the stars from the observation deck one evening. A crew member, overwhelmed by a panic attack, was convinced they had seen a shadow moving in the empty quarters of the ship. The incident shook the crew, fueling the growing sense of unease aboard the Eternity. Hart realized that the psychological effects of their journey were not just individual experiences but manifesting in the ship's collective psyche. The vastness of space, once a source of wonder, had become a mirror reflecting their deepest anxieties and fears. Dr. Elias Hart stood before the assembled crew of the Eternity's voyage, his eyes meeting theirs in a shared understanding of their challenges. He spoke with a candor that resonated in the quiet room, addressing the haunting presence of the solitude syndrome that had woven itself into the fabric of their mission. Yet, in his words, there was also a reminder of their purpose, achievements, and place in the grand narrative of human exploration. The crew, gathered in the dimly lit common area, listened intently. At that moment, a fragile sense of solidarity began to take root, despite the weight of solitude and the unspoken fears that lingered in their hearts. They were, after all, travelers together on the same starship, each grappling with the void in their own way, yet united by the shared experience of this unprecedented journey. As the meeting concluded, Hart walked back to his office through the silent corridors of the ship. His steps were measured, his mind a whirl of thoughts and emotions. There was a deep-seated concern for the well-being of his crew, a feeling that the journey ahead was fraught with unknown challenges. Yet there was also a resolve within him, a commitment to guide them through the psychological trials of deep space. Settling back into his office, Hart gazed out into the cosmos. The distant and seemingly indifferent stars shone against the backdrop of infinite darkness. In their cold, silent glow, he found a reflection of the journey they were all on a journey that was as much about exploring the mysteries of the human mind as it was about traversing the vastness of space. Dr. Elias Hart sat in his office aboard the Eternity's voyage, poring over the notes from his recent group session. The crew's voices, still resonant in his mind, painted a picture of a shared psychological crisis. The more he listened, the more he realized the depth of the impact of solitude syndrome. It was as though a haunting melody of despair played softly in the background of their lives, composed of stardust and silence. Hart decided to delve into the personal histories of the crew members. Understanding their backgrounds might offer insights into their resilience or vulnerability to the syndrome. He began with Lieutenant Grace Kim, a young engineer who had recently expressed feelings of paranoia. Her file revealed a history of strong family connections and a deep fascination with the stars. Yet now those same stars seemed to haunt her. Next, he reviewed the file of Chief Engineer Alan Spector, a space travel veteran. Spector had always been a rock for the crew, but lately he had become withdrawn, spending hours staring out into space. His notes mentioned a growing sense of disconnection from the life he had left behind on Earth. As Hart immersed himself in these stories, a pattern emerged. Regardless of their background, each crew member grappled with the existential weight of their isolation. It was as if leaving Earth had unmoored them from a fundamental sense of belonging. The ship's counselor, Maria Gonzalez, approached Hart with concerns about the crew's morale. They organized workshops and group activities to foster a sense of community and shared purpose. But even these efforts seemed like a temporary balm on a deeper wound. A sudden commotion broke his contemplation as Hart observed the stars from the observation deck one evening. A crew member, overwhelmed by a panic attack, was convinced they had seen a shadow moving in the empty quarters of the ship. The incident shook the crew, fueling the growing sense of unease aboard the Eternity. Hart realized that the psychological effects of their journey were not just individual experiences but manifesting in the ship's collective psyche. The vastness of space, once a source of wonder, 
had become a mirror reflecting their deepest anxieties and fears. Dr. Elias Hart stood before the assembled crew of the Eternity's voyage, his eyes meeting theirs in a shared understanding of their challenges. He spoke with a candor that resonated in the quiet room, addressing the haunting presence of the solitude syndrome that had woven itself into the fabric of their mission. Yet, in his words, there was also a reminder of their purpose, achievements, and place in the grand narrative of human exploration. The crew, gathered in the dimly lit common area, listened intently. At that moment, a fragile sense of solidarity began to take root, despite the weight of solitude and the unspoken fears that lingered in their hearts. They were, after all, travelers together on the same starship, each grappling with the void in their own way, yet united by the shared experience of this unprecedented journey. As the meeting concluded, Hart walked back to his office through the silent corridors of the ship. His steps were measured, his mind a whirl of thoughts and emotions. There was a deep-seated concern for the well-being of his crew, a feeling that the journey ahead was fraught with unknown challenges. Yet there was also a resolve within him, a commitment to guide them through the psychological trials of deep space. Settling back into his office, Hart gazed out into the cosmos. The distant and seemingly indifferent stars shone against the backdrop of infinite darkness. In their cold, silent glow, he found a reflection of the journey they were all on a journey that was as much about exploring the mysteries of the human mind as it was about traversing the vastness of space. The dimly lit interior of Eternity's voyage felt more oppressive than usual as Dr. Elias Hart navigated its corridors. The ship, a beacon of human achievement now seemed to echo with a haunting melancholy. Hart would check on Alan Spector, the chief engineer, whose recent behavior had become increasingly erratic. As he approached Spector's quarters, Hart couldn't help but reflect on the stark contrast between the early days of the mission, filled with optimism and excitement, and the present, shrouded in an almost palpable sense of despair. The door slid open to reveal Spector sitting by his desk staring blankly at a photograph from Earth. Alan, how are you feeling today, Hart asked, his voice soft. Spectre looked up, his eyes hollow. It's like we're chasing shadows, Doc. Chasing the memories of sons we've left behind his words poignantly expressed the deep loss and disconnection felt by many aboard. Their conversation revealed Spectre's struggles with not just the isolation of space, but also deep-seated grief, for a life he felt was slipping away. Hart listened, offering empathetic support while internally noting the exacerbating effects of the syndrome on existing emotional wounds. After leaving Spectre, Hart decided to delve deeper into the crew's psychological history. He spent hours in his office reviewing files and looking for patterns or triggers that might help him better understand and address the growing crisis. During his research, Hart stumbled upon a file he hadn't opened in years his own. It contained notes from his early days in space psychology, full of idealism and hope. But it also held darker pages, detailing his own brush with despair following his brother's tragic experience with the Solitude Syndrome during an early Mars mission. This personal connection to the syndrome had been Hart's driving force, pushing him to seek solutions to a problem that now seemed increasingly insurmountable. His brother's voice seemed to echo in his mind, a reminder of the personal cost of humanity's quest among the stars. The following day, Hart organized a meeting with the ship's captain to discuss potential strategies to mitigate the effects of the syndrome. They considered various options, from altering the ship's routine to introducing more robust psychological support systems. Yet Hart couldn't shake the feeling that these were mere stopgaps in the face of an existential crisis. In a moment of introspection, Doctor, Elias Hart stood alone on the observation deck of the Eternity's voyage. His gaze was fixed on the distant stars, each a light point representing countless worlds and possibilities. Yet they were adrift in the vastness of space, enveloped in the shadows of forgotten suns, confronting the profound loneliness of their existence. The stars twinkled with an indifferent light against the void, a stark contrast to the turmoil Hart felt within. 
As he stood there, lost in thought, he realized the journey of eternity was more than a mere physical traversal of space. It was a profound journey into the depths of the human psyche that confronted the daunting, existential question of what it means to be alone in the universe.